Indy TV 24-7 in association with Amity University. Hello and welcome to the special programming on NDTV as we mark World Cancer Day 2017. I'm Nikhil Ananda. It's called the Emperor of All Maladies and as some estimates are to be believed, over 700,000 people in India succumb to it every year, making cancer a leading cause of death in the country. What's to explain the high incidence of cancer in India? How do we compare with the rest of the globe? Can early detection and preventive lifestyle measures go some way in eliminating the risk and how reactive has public policy response been to this growing burden in the country? Those are some of the issues that I will be discussing over the next half hour with a very imminent set of doctors and oncologists from the Asian Cancer Institute who join us in the studio with me is Dr. Ramakan Deshpande, a thoracic surgeon. We also have Dr. Deepak M. Parikh who joins us. He specializes in head, neck and laser surgery. Joining us also is Dr. Sanjay Sharma who will tell us about breast cancer and Dr. Jagdish Kulkarni whose area of expertise is gynac and robotic surgery. Thanks so much gentlemen for joining us here in the studios. I want to begin with a very simple question, you know, just to sort of do a bit of a refresher for our viewers. What exactly is cancer? Dr. Deshpande and where do we stand today in terms of our understanding of the disease and our ability really to combat it? Uh, the human body is made of millions and millions of uh, cells who are arranged in a particular order and uh, serve uh, appropriate functions. Any abnormality which occurs in this, uh, an unruly kind of a multiplication of cells, proliferation of cells, which does not serve any useful pr uh, purpose and keeps on multiplying uh, eventually being detrimental to the very living itself is what we call as cancer. Mm -hmm. This is uh, akin to in a human population if you have a band, a large huge band of criminals in a particular area, something like that, akin to that. Uh, as you said, uh, yes, almost about uh, more than 700 people, 700,000 people uh, pass away every year because of cancer, but the real incidence is almost about 1.1 million, that's about 11 lakh so there's uh, an under-reporting? Uh, no, the deaths are 7 lakhs, but okay. uh, the incidence, the new cancer patients are almost about 11 lakhs. 55% uh, of these are women. And because of the hormonal uh, 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 hormonal variations and because of the stress relations, normally women tend to have a larger number of cancers. And you'll be surprised that this incidence is practically half of the world uh, cancer levels. In a developed country, uh, you, have, uh, you have a much larger incidence of cancer, at least double of that. And if we are trying going to be a developed country over a period of time in the next 10, 20 years, our incidence of cancer also will go up. One of the main things is that there is usually usually with the word cancerous stigma is attached to it mm -hmm. and that was our main problem with the public. Uh, just to give an example, a patient would walk in but prior to that I get a call or a note from the relatives, please don't disclose the diagnosis to the patient and that is something which gradually we have seen over the last 15-20 years is kind of receding, mm -hmm. patients are being counseled, they are being told up front and one of the major reasons for that I think is because our understanding as you rightly mentioned is far better today than it was 25-30 years ago. It's to do with the biological behavior of the cancer cells, the understanding of how they spread and hence we have got multiple fronts which I'm sure we'll discuss a little later of how we tackle it. And this has been to an advantage to be able to counsel the patient and the relatives of the outcomes and what they're going to go through in the treatment. Right. So you know as somebody uh, you know, who wants to come and actually get a checkup done, uh, Dr. Sharma, you know, what are the early signs, the symptoms that people ought to be watching out for? Uh, you know, anything, any sort of ungainly growth that, that, that should worry you and that should actually get you to a doctor? And have you actually seen the incidence of people coming for early diagnosis increasing in India? Uh, to answer your second question, certainly people are getting more and more aware and especially in case of uh, women cancer in urban areas they are great awareness people come and now initially we are getting about 70 to 80 percent patient in advanced stages and only about 10 percent patient were coming very early but the incidence is increased up to 30 percent 35 percent in younger people especially who have come with a lump in the, their breast 
regarding the other representation there are basically seven warning signs any okay. growth which is growing fast any ulcer of the mouth or any part of the body increasing hoarseness of voice difficulty in swallowing bleeding from uh, their normal orifices excesses of bleeding which continues obviously in advanced cases patients have their loss of appetite and loss of weight and all the things and other hematologic uh, hematological malignancies patient develop fevers and you know all kinds of uh, weight losses and all so these are basically uh, any mole which is increasing any ulcer in the mouth especially in the people who are of uh, you know having lot of lifestyle uh, really you know yeah. effects on their life Uh, which is the principal cause, and which we can discuss that is one of the primary reasons why these cancers increased over years. Right, but Dr. Uh, Kulkarni, you know how important is early diagnosis in treating cancer, and uh, is that a game changer that people should really be concerned about getting themselves diagnosed early? Well, I think uh, what yeah. you say is absolutely right. It is a game changer. Yeah. If you can diagnose early, you can cure him well. So that's important, and I think all efforts should be made. and we are making it uh, you know when i was student back in 1980s we used to get patients with advanced diseases coming more or less to the terminal stage however we is finding and i must say at this point uh, the revolution which has it has caused with the awareness among the second generation of the patients who are you know they are, they are willing to quickly come to the diagnosis i mean they are inquisitive they ask questions and therefore we find people are getting aware of this diagnosis and once you get aware of course uh, you will be able to be treated well certainly the cure can be guaranteed okay so you know dr uh, deshpande you know you spoke about this sort of phenomena this disease which spreads in your body there's this uncontrolled division of the so called uh, abnormal cells how much of this is a matter of genes these are the for instance the choices one makes in life whether it's to smoke whether what one eats where one lives how much one exposes oneself to pollution you know how much do these variables really matter in cancer so ultimately all cancer is is genetic and there's something there is something wrong uh, which happens with the genes you can't really have a malignancy but the the deciding factor about this genetic change could actually be come from an external source for example pollution or habits or uh, irritation like tobacco is a known carcinogenic particularly in lung cancer and almost about more than eight cancers now directly involved with it uh, but and it's to a large extent so the lifestyle cancers are almost very very uh, that's probably one of the most predominant uh, reasons uh, atmospheric pollution has been accepted now as one of the carcinogenic agents by the world uh, health organization itself and a uh, few of them are directly related to the genes you know uh, for For example, the familial cancers, but they are less than five percent. Today, uh, almost every family uh, which is which exists anywhere in the world will have either a member of the family or a first relative who will have at some stage or other suffer from cancer. So there is no point in talking too much about uh, genetic aspect. But I think what is correctable is the external influences like the habits. For example, if we eliminate tobacco, almost thirty percent cancers will go down. If we reduce pollution. another 10% may actually go down so in fact i uh, dr parekh have you seen uh, this sort of cancer related to tobacco and smoking coming down because the incidence or the number of people smoking or the number of people actually uh, you know consuming tobacco has come down in india and has that shown any tangible effects is yes uh, the prob- the problem with this is that the tobacco habits it's one part of not taking tobacco at all most is stopping it after 10 15 years right <laughs> the issue with tobacco is that the impact is not immediate like as i tell my patients very often if you take alcohol and you have two or three pegs the next day you get up with such a bad headache and a hangover that doesn't happen with tobacco but even if you stop it if they have been consuming heavily earlier after 10 15 years a cancer can start happening so right. what needs to be emphasized in tobacco and betel nut which are some of the common habits within our country is just eliminate and do not get into the habit dr sharma before we start the show we were talking about incidence and you said that cancer is not an entity that's really moving in one direction i mean you know we've seen better numbers in certain types of cancers certain other types of cancers actually we seen the incidence going up so give me a sort of snapshot of what are the types of cancers uh, whose dangers are going up in india and where have we seen the reduction let's start with the good news okay the cervical cancer of dr kulkarni is an expert in that has gone down in you know 
per 100,000 initially was about 30, 40 per, uh, per 100,000, now it's come down to almost 20 per 100,000. So there's reduction. For whatever good reasons, now it's very important news. Basically, it is more liquid to be cleanliness, less pregnancies, less abortions, people getting aware, and obviously going in uh, for early checkups, and more importantly, now development of vaccines. Unfortunately, because of the changing lifestyle, what we call as fast lifestyle or McDonald's style of lifestyles, the eating habit changes, no time for exercises, girls working, getting married late, going to the office, no kids, no breastfeeding for a long time. Incidents of breast cancer rocketed over the last two decades. Right. Previously it was in urban areas was 20, 22 per 100,000. Now we are talking something between 30 to 35 per 100,000. But this is still in its infancy. The research is still on on that. And I think we need to look and study more the demographics in our country to understand that better. All right, we'll uh, discuss uh, lots more in fact to discuss. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about the public policy response to cancer. Has that been adequate in India? We'll also talk about uh, what the ACI has really been up to in this area and how technology, robotics, for instance, is shaping.